for Docker Desktop, it is the most popular third-party extension. So for those that have Docker Desktop, you can have all these plugins, they call them extensions. And there's a lot, like, I don't know how many, 89, there's 89 extensions. This idea has only existed for two years. And we have, you know, we're getting close to a hundred extensions. You're number one, I consider it number one, because, you know, th these are basically the things that should be just out of the box. I don't know why they're extra extensions. They should just come with Docker Desktop. They're made by Docker. But what do you think people are doing with this? <laughs> <laughs> are they like in my case i would use this maybe on my local machine to manage my raspberry pi is running micro Kates in the closet instead of me running it maybe on that cluster permanently i could run it locally do you think people are using it to manage their own docker desktop like it, like as in it, as in it's a better tool for managing kubernetes and docker and swarm on my own machine than it is docker itself is that what they're doing do you have well, any, any use cases on this yeah, Docker, Docker desktop is pretty raw um, in some regards. Are you still seeing my screen? Yeah. Oh, let me jump back. Let me jump back. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you something. Then I'm going to use the Plutainer server as an example because I, you know, I just want to show a simple Docker environment. So, um, so this, is, this happens to be a Docker Swarm, a single node Docker Swarm machine, but irrelevant. It could be a Docker desktop instance. And one of the, one of the big benefits, I think, why people would use it is... You can go to Stacks. Now, Stacks is just our word for Compose. You can add a stack and you've got Git repo and you can turn on GitOps. And GitOps is actually, for Docker, is very, it's a very hard thing to do. And so yeah. you can all of a sudden get your Docker desktop instance and you can now have a full GitOps pipeline for your Docker desktop instance coming back to some central cloud repo. Now, obviously, if you're running Docker desktop and you're running Kubernetes, well, number one, you've probably got a very, very expensive laptop with lots of memory because it's you know, ridiculously uh, hungry for memory. Yeah. But if, if not, and you're running Docker, well, then if you want to start perfecting the skills and GitOps, then you can just do it in Portainer right now with you know, out, out of the box. So there's that. But also, there's a lot of capability inside inside Portainer that Docker desktop just, just doesn't have. Like, you can see these things just refreshed here. Now, they, these are basically image up-to-date indicators. So, you know, it's, am I running the latest image? Yes or no? And you can see here, this one's orange here. It means that I'm not, I'm simply not running the latest image. That there's a newer version of the image available in the repo and I'm running an out-of-date image. So it's just a lot of really quick to hand UI features there. And you, one of, one of the big benefits of Portana is we make it really easy to discover things, to discover capability. You know, one of the problems with the command line is that you don't know the command to type, then you can't type the command dash dash help to read up about right. it. Whereas for Tain, you can be clicking around and you can see a bunch of really cool things and you're like, man, I didn't even know Docker did that. And so you start to experiment with features and capabilities that you might not otherwise have been exposed to if you didn't have a way to graphically see what is possible. Um, and so I think a lot of people are just using Fortana as a way to get, get easy access to some relatively advanced capabilities. Yeah. We've got a question in chat really quick. Martin's asking, the GitOps option sounds interesting. How does it work? And I'm assuming, I think they're talking about like, does it get clone? Does it check like GitHub and GitLab APIs? Or I think that's what they're asking. Yeah, you know I how? will. I'll do, I'll do two things. I will explain it, but I'll also point you to uh, Fortana Academy. So the Fortana Academy has a bunch of training material on how to use Fortana. Um, it also has our reference architectures, which explain in great deal how elements of Portainer work, including Git. So if you really, really want to know how it works, go have a read of the reference architectures or the academy pages, and uh, and you'll you'll deeply understand how the tech works. But and in a nutshell, Portainer becomes the reconciliation loop engine. So the Portainer server, not the clusters, not the Docker environments out there, and if you think about your yeah, Argo or all these other tools, you know, they each run an agent in all the clusters and that agent is doing the reconciliation loop. Well, Portainer does the reconciliation loop. It clones the repo, shallow clones the repo into the Portainer server's system volume. It grabs the relevant compose files or other files it needs and uses those to deploy the application. It then has a reconciliation loop time that you set here either a reconciliation loop or a webhook, which will force, will force a, a, a reconcile. It's then checking against the commit ID and Git and saying, well, I'm running an application with this commit ID. 
has the ID changed? Yes. Okay. Th- then I'm going to go cold again, look for changes and deploy the app and deploy the changes. So it's basically just reconciling against Git and saying, if I see changes, then grab those changes and, and propagate them to the running environment in real time. And what does that, okay. So we, you mentioned compose. So we're talking about GitOps. I know that p- people, if you're not familiar with GitOps, well, welcome to the channel where we talk about GitOps a lot. It's one of my favorite things of the 2020s, but this supports a compose file. Does it support, what else does it support? I'm, I'm assuming Kubernetes manifest, Helm charts. Kubernetes, Kubernetes manifest, Helm charts coming, Helm, Helm charts coming soon, but right now compose files and Kubernetes manifests. Okay. So, so right, right now, this is a Git repo and it's composed. If I switch to a Kubernetes environment, it would be asked to meet all a manifest file. Right. Ansa Q is asking about templating support for these Docker Compose files. I'm assuming that is in, in the background, is it just using the Compose libraries to, if, can you pass it like an override Compose file? Do you know anything about any of those advanced features? We actually have this, this feature called mustache variables. And basically inside your Compose file, you can do, you know, the mustache, so bracket, 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 and then at deploy time. So when you reference the file, it'll ask you to actually input the variables. We will substitute those variables at runtime. So you can do that as well if you wanted to. So you can actually have these mustache variables and it's for a kind of rapid replace mechanism. So you can do that. That's more under the um, app templates, custom templates, where you can actually go and build these and, and use use all of the mustache variables that you need to change oh, things. And okay. Again, app yeah, so- templates and custom templates are a bit, a bit like, like an app store for you know, for Docker, and we have something similar for Kubernetes as well, based off how 